Hello, I'm Ramey Fox, Customer Service Representative for Jefferson County Transportation and Engineering. Today, I'll be going over some questions and processes regarding pulling a permit for placing a temporary container in the street. Hi everybody, I'm Dixie Shear. I work as a resident engineer in the Transportation and Engineering Division for Jefferson County. Today, I want to talk with you about temporary containers and when you need to get a permit for them. You can find information for the temporary container permit on our website. Please see the description of this video for a link. Temporary containers are any enclosure that are used to hold things, such as moving containers from U-Haul or pods. It can also include connex units. More commonly, temporary containers are roll-off dumpsters used during construction to contain trash and debris. These units are loaded on and off special trucks for transport. Trailers do not qualify as temporary containers because they have wheels and are separately licensed by the Motor Vehicle Department. If you plan on putting the temporary container in the public right-of-way, such as the street or road, then a permit is required. If the container is placed on private property, such as a driveway or in the yard, then no permit is needed. Yes, permits for roofs, basements, and etc. will only cover work done on the home and do not cover anything done in the right-of-way. The only exception to this rule is for large projects, such as new subdivisions, where it is required that every new unit have a temporary container for debris during construction. Temporary containers will be an obstruction in the public right-of-way. Permitting is necessary so the county can be sure the unit is properly located and monitored. The units take valuable space normally used for parking. The units also affect county road maintenance operations, such as snow plowing or other road maintenance. The permit application can be found on our website, link in the description. Once you have filled out the form and submitted it, t &E staff will give it to an inspector for approval. Once approved, you will receive an email and then can make payment for the permit at your convenience. We can accept checks or credit cards and we can take credit card payment over the phone. We usually ask for two business days for approval. This does not include weekends, holidays, or other days where the county may be closed. The permit is $50 plus a 2.5% fee if paying by a credit card. The permit is good for 90 calendar days. The permit can be easily renewed for another 90 days at no extra cost. You can put your temporary container on any county right-of-way, which is usually the residential or local road classification. You cannot put temporary containers on arterial roadways or on collector roadways. Arterial streets serve regional traffic and carry high traffic volumes. These streets have four to six lanes and typically have a raised center median with bike lanes and sidewalks on either side. Their design speeds range from 30 miles per hour to 45 miles per hour. Collector streets serve neighborhood and intra-community traffic and carry moderate traffic volumes. These streets have two lanes plus turn lanes. Sometimes opposing traffic is separated with a center median. Whenever there are additional lanes like turn lanes, they will be striped on a collector street. Sidewalks are usually on either side. Design speeds range from 25 miles per hour to 40 miles per hour. Local residential streets and roads serve neighborhood traffic over very short distances. They access the higher class streets that I just described. These streets have two travel lanes and are usually wide enough to allow street side parking. Access is primarily for the residential driveways. 
Design speeds on local streets are 15 to 25 miles per hour. The proper placement for a temporary container in Jefferson County's right-of-way has to follow a couple of rules. First, it has to be located at least 20 feet away from the nearest street corner. That's so that drivers can see around the unit as they travel into the intersection. Secondly, it should not obstruct any other driveways, alleyways, or any kind of loading zone. It should also be placed as far to the edge of the street as possible, which would be in a parking lane, and it should be adjacent to the curb and gutter, but it should not block the sidewalk. The temporary container should already have reflective tape on it when it arrives from your rental company. If this tape is not visible, then you are advised to place a cone in the rear of the container so that vehicles can see it at night. If there's a leak in your temporary container, yes, you will be responsible for the cleanup. You should not be placing liquid waste such as used fuel or antifreeze or paint in your container to begin with. They don't belong in the landfill. The repercussions for violating the safe practices for a temporary container will result in one warning from Jefferson County. Depending on the severity, you may have up to a week to make the corrections. If you have liquids draining from your temporary container, that will be considered an illicit discharge and immediate action is required. If you fail to do that, it could result in legal actions against you and you will be liable for the cleanup costs. Well, thanks for tuning in to watch this video and good luck on your projects. Thanks for watching and drive safe, Jeffco.